Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, we will give it a few minutes and then we'll get started with the uh, pre-submittal conference for the uh, Small Business and Not-for-Profit Support Grant Program. So we'll give it a, a couple of minutes. I know we have a few hundred more people that we're expecting. So uh, we'll give it a few minutes before we get started. Thank you. Okay, uh, everyone, thank you for joining the uh, Small Business and Not-for-Profit Support Grant Program pre-submittal conference. Uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, what I'd like to do is offer a little bit of clarification before we launch into this pre-submittal conference. Um, I noticed that we got a, a rather large amount of interest in this uh, program, and we're, we are excited about that. However, I want to make sure that everyone is aware that uh, in this particular grant opportunity, what we're actually looking for first is to secure a grants administrator. So that's what we're gonna do with uh, this particular RFP. Uh, what we'll do after we've secured an organization to manage the grant, we will then move to phase two, which is to actually put together a grants program where we will disperse the funding uh, that is part of uh, the overall grant. So I hope that uh, clarifies to a lot of the questions that we're getting. So again, to, to sort of recap, we're looking for a grants administrator that will work with the city to design the program. After we've designed the program, we will then move to phase two, where we will start dispersing the funding to eligible small businesses and not for profit organizations. So what I'm gonna do is launch into uh, our presentation and I will ask that you guys hold your questions to the end of the presentation. And what we will do is try to answer as many of those questions as possible. Also in the interest of time, if we see that there are duplicate questions, we are unable to answer those uh, here. What we will also do uh, as a follow-up is we will publish this video as well as provide you guys the presentation, as well as a list of the uh, questions along with the answers that uh, came uh, from this particular presentation. So uh, I'll launch into our agenda here. Uh, the first thing we have on our agenda is uh, we want to make sure that um, we give you guys an overview of business affairs and consumer protection, also known as BACP. 
And then we will dive a little bit deeper into the small business and not-for-profit support program. And then we will provide you guys an RFP timeline. And then, as I just mentioned, uh, we will uh, allow some time for questions and provide some answers. Uh, so BACP, the overview is, uh, we are the Business Affairs and Consumer Protection Department of the City of Chicago. Uh, the department uh, ensures a fair and private marketplace for businesses, workers, and consumers in the City of Chicago. We license businesses, public vehicles, regulate business activities, protect consumers from fraud, enforces Chicago labor laws, partners with business service organizations, and provides educational and resources for businesses. Uh, you will see there's a link here if you want to go to find out additional information about uh, BACP. Uh, you can go to that link and um, get more information about each of the distinct um, divisions within the department. So as I mentioned, we have the business compliance and enforcement. Uh, so this is basically we're making sure that people who are uh, operating in a regulated space, that they have proper licensing and permit. Uh, for those businesses that are engaged in uh, the sales of alcohol, we have a local liquor uh, control commissioner who regulates that activity. Uh, for those workers out there, we have an office of labor standards, and then we do a lot of uh, educational and outreach through uh, this particular division here. Uh, for those businesses or individuals that find themselves uh, in situations where fines are being levied, uh, we do have a prosecutions and adjudications division. And for those uh, taxi cabs and public vehicles, we license and inspect those. This particular opportunity is uh, being managed through the Small Business Advocacy and Recovery uh, Division. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we have our Small Business Center, which is ultimately where most of uh, the small businesses have to go in order for them to get their licensing. Uh, and so I'll, I'll dive a little bit deeper into uh, our small business advocacy group, which is where uh, this particular opportunity exists. Uh, the small business advocacy division is headed up by uh, Lota Kapai. She is our chief small business officer. Uh, we support the small business ecosystem of Chicago, and we want to promote economic development. Uh, we do that through our economic strategy team. Uh, a lot of you guys have worked with um, non the neighborhood business development centers. Uh, we also have several, I believe we have eight Chicago, Chicago business centers uh, throughout the city of Chicago that uh, assist uh, individuals with uh, licensing questions and licensing needs. And then uh, we also have a COVID vaccination outreach for employers to provide some guidance. Uh, specifically, as I mentioned, within the small business and advocacy group is the economic recovery team, for which I am the director. Uh, Hayo Oliveris is our uh, manager. And uh, this team is tasked with managing the federal funding received from the American Rescue Plan Act, or ARPA. Uh, and we have categorized uh, programs that are funded into three categories. They are uh, essentially your small business support, your nonprofit su support, and then your food equity. Uh, if you have questions about uh, the specifics within the economic recovery team, we do have a website. Uh, we encourage you to uh, go to that website, and there's lots of additional information about uh, the ARPA funding, the ARPA programs that we have uh, running and programs that we've run in the past. Specific to this small business uh, opportunity, um, here's a little bit more information that we provided. Uh, we recognize that as a result of uh, the recent pandemic, that a lot of businesses, small businesses in particular, and nonprofits uh, are still in need of assistance. Uh, they're, they're still trying to, to get through this really difficult uh, landscape uh, and, and trying to get not only to the road to recovery, but they also want to uh, uh, you know, be in a better position uh, than they were before the, the pandemic. So uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of this meeting, we are looking for a grant administrator. That is key. A grant administrator is who the city will work with uh, to design uh, the grants disbursement process. So again, that's what this particular opportunity is for, uh, to identify uh, a, a, a well-qualified grant administrator that uh, we ultimately will award this contract to um, and work with them to design uh, 
a program where we will disperse grants to uh, small businesses and not-for-profit organizations. And so in this last paragraph here, we sort of gave you uh, a general overview of uh, the pandemic-related harms that uh, potentially would qualify for uh, a grant uh, if you are a small business or a not-for-profit organization. For small businesses uh, and not-for-profits, not the eligible harms might include revenue loss. Uh, for nonprofits, it could be harms that were uh, around the increased cost uh, that you incur because uh, labor or materials or because of the demand, the increased demand for services. We, we've heard from a lot of small not-for-profits that they've had a lot of uh, inquiries and lots of requests for help, but unfortunately, they too were harmed by the pandemic. And so they were not in a position to provide as much help as they would want to. And so we're attempting to alleviate some of that uh, with this uh, grants program once we actually hire a grants administrator and, and begin the process of standing up this, this program. Again, a little bit more uh, of an overview here. Uh, what we're looking for is one uh, community and economic development organization. We're looking to uh, disperse approximately 2,000 grants. Again, that's just an estimate. Uh, once we get into the design phase, uh, once we've selected uh, an organization and uh, get into the design phase, uh, this number could potentially change. Um, the overall grant award amount is $21.5 million. Uh, that's not to say the entire $21.5 million will be dispersed through grant funding. We recognize that the organization that uh, we award this uh, contract to will have some overhead costs. And so we're anticipating that uh, their direct costs will be within the range of 10%, but no higher than 10%. Um, the terms of this would be uh, October, and again, these are rough dates, um, October 1st of 2024 uh, through March 31st of 2026, uh, with the possibility of one extension for up to six months. Again, once we stand up the program and actually get it running, uh, some of these dates are, are subjected to change, but uh, this is uh, our current uh, projection of the timeline uh, for this contract. Okay, and so when we talk about your proposal, um, these are uh, key uh, components of uh, what you should be submitting in your application. We wanna get a good picture of the potential um, awardee that we will select. So you want to make sure that you understand that you will be collaborating with the city to create uh, an accessible online grant application process. So once we've selected the grant administrator, we will work with that administrator to develop a process by which uh, they will make a, a website available to those uh, small businesses and nonprofits that want to apply for the grant funds. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, you understand and tell us that you understand how you will successfully uh, provide a review around those eligible uh, applications. So once you start receiving those applications, we want to know that you have the experience with uh, determining eligibility uh, and then determining who's not eligible based off of the criteria that the grant administrator will work with the city of Chicago. You also need to be in a position to be able to disburse uh, 20 million in federal funds to those uh, individuals that we have deemed eligible. And of course, because it is such a large amount of money and it is federal funding, uh, in addition to all of the city requirements for tracking and reporting and audit, you will also have to be aware and be in compliance with uh, federal rules around uh, federal funding. Uh, another thing that's key here is that we want to make sure that you meet all of the requirements prior to the end of the performance period. Um, again, nonprofit organizations, and these are examples here, uh, collectives can apply with a nonprofit uh, fiscal sponsor. For-profit entities can apply, uh, but we also want to make sure that you guys are aware that the federal government puts restrictions on uh, profitability. So a for-profit entity can uh, be an awardee, but uh, they have to adhere to the regulations set out uh, by the federal government that uh, pretty much indicates that for-profit businesses cannot make profit from this work. So if you incur expenses, all of the funding that would be granted would have to go back to your overall management of the program. You cannot walk away uh, with a profit. Uh, I cannot speak 
too heavily on this requirement other than to say that uh, this is uh, coming from the federal government and would encourage anybody who has questions about this to uh, do the research and, and find out about the uniform guidance. Um, we, we also recognize that there's opportunities for joint proposals uh, and coalition submissions, uh, but we are looking for just one lead agency to submit that uh, application, and then they can list all of the other entities that are subcontractors that they will be um, using uh, to, to manage the program. Again, we will make the award to just one agency. This will not be uh, an award to those other agencies that uh, the lead agency is working with. Th those arrangements will have to be worked out between the, the lead agency. The city of Chicago won't get into that really complicated mix. We will award uh, the funding to the one agency who will then have to make sure that they're obviously in compliance and um, contractually uh, compliant with those organizations that they wish to partner with. The one caveat that we have here is about the applicants with existing contracts with the city. If you're not in good standing, unfortunately, we cannot uh, um, review your application uh, for this uh, particular funding. Um, and if you've had your application or if you've had your funding or contract terminated because um, of some uh, bad performance or issues related to your management of the contract, those applications will not be considered for this as well. So we're looking for uh, contractors that are in good standing, or if you're a new contractor uh, with the city, that um, you know, you'll, you'll obviously have to go through the, the vetting process. The process is handled by the um, Department of Procurement Services. And so uh, a little bit later on, I will mention uh, what you guys would need to do in order for you uh, to apply for, for this opportunity. So I'll talk about the budget and the program expenses. Uh, the applicant must complete a program budget outlining all details of expenses in their entirety. Uh, this is really key. Uh, as I mentioned before, this is a rather large amount of money. We are looking to make sure that the uh, organization that we award this contract to is in a really good position to, to manage this funding. And so uh, the way that we vet uh, those organizations is to, to look at the budget, uh, one of, of many things, but the budget is key, uh, provides a, a really detailed uh, budget of what your expenses are going to be. Uh, program staffing time. These are things that we would uh, allow for the, the program. Um, an indirect cost, uh, again, would be indirect costs, including uh, facilities and administrative costs, may be charged in accordance with uniform guidance uh, at the 10% de minimis uh, standard. Uh, any direct cost higher than this standard required a negotiated indirect cost agreement with a federal cognizant agency. So in other words, we're really hoping that you stay within that 10% de minimis. If you cannot, uh, then that's that's going to have to be a negotiation. That's not to say it cannot happen. It's, it's just not as easy as complying with the, the standard 10%. Um, program materials, again, this is a federal uh, contract. And so we want to make sure that uh, the expenses are valued at 4,900, less than 5,000, in other words. Uh, which again is, is around capital expenditures as uh, outlined and defined by the federal government. Uh, marketing and outreach costs, uh, you need to include that in your budget. Uh, that is an eligible expense. We definitely wanna make sure that once we stand up this grant program that uh, marketing does occur. So please make sure that when you submit a budget that you're including this marketing and, and outreach and promotion as part of the expenses. Uh, that uh, is part of your overall budget. Again, uh, we highlighted here the capital asset purchases. Again, equipment, property, real estate is not considered an allowable expense uh, for this program. The funds reimbursement process, uh, applicants are advised of our reimbursement process. Uh, there's, there's a two track uh, method here for your routine costs, uh, such as uh, salary and overhead, the delegate agency, and in this case, I think I sort of need to define what a delegate agency is. A delegate agency is essentially uh, an organization that the city is contracting with. Uh, we've delegated uh, certain functions to an agency that we have contracted with. And so uh, ordinarily, these would be services that the city would 
uh, provide, but because the city would probably end up employing uh, several hundred thousand people to, to meet the demands of these programs, we recognize that uh, it's in our best interest to hire uh, agencies or organizations to manage these programs. They're overseen by the city of Chicago, but we delegate the responsibility to these agencies. And so that's what we refer to, uh, when we're, that's what we're talking about when we refer to a delegate agency. So that delegate agency will be required for those nominal overhead expenses uh, to go through uh, the city's web-based e-vouchering system. However, for the grants administration uh, or disbursements, uh, fund, disbursements of the grant funds, there's a separate uh, process. The delegate agency will be required to make um, one or possibly mul multiple expended reimbursement requests to the city uh, in a format that uh, we will provide. So once we award that contract, we do have a process in place that uh, we would uh, provide you guys spreadsheets, we would provide you instructions, and we would ask you to um, populate those spreadsheets uh, with the potential small businesses and not-for-profit organizations that have been deemed eligible. And uh, then we'll walk through that uh, reimbursement process. We recognize that most agencies don't have, uh, you know, approximately $20 million sitting in the bank to, to fund uh, those grants. So the city will uh, engage in what's called an expedited uh, reimbursement process. Uh, again, once we, so we don't expect you guys to, to fund this portion of it. The routine costs uh, that, that would be reimbursable, so you'd go through our normal uh, vouchering process, but the grant disbursement process itself will be expedited, where we will uh, ultimately turn over the funding to uh, the selected organization, who will then have a very short period of time to provide proof that they have uh, dispersed those funds to all of the eligible um um, grantees, sub-grantees. Um, again, I keep mentioning that this is a, a large amount of money. It is uh, federal funding, so there's oversight. Uh, so there will be uh, lots of reporting requirements. We'll, we will be looking for that organization to be organized enough to and, and have enough experience that they would be able to adhere to the reporting uh, requirements that we have. We're going to be looking at all collecting all of the eligible applicant data. We're going to be making sure that um, you uh, provide us a final report after all the disbursement has occurred. And we're going to expect that you guys are doing that uh, in a time frame that uh, is required of not only the city, but because this is federal funding, we will require, we, the city of Chicago, will be required to adhere to any of the timelines set forth by the federal government. Also, that delegate agency will be required to keep detailed records on cost. Uh, anything that uh, would potentially um, be audit, audited by the federal government, you want to make sure that you're keeping all of those records. And then you also want to make sure that if, if you guys have not um, had any dealings with the American Rescue Plan Act, which is this program is a part of, I would uh, advise you to, to do some research on uh, the American Rescue Plan and, and sort of get yourself familiar with uh, the parameters of uh, the ARP uh, programming. And then due to the size of the grant, uh, this grant will be subjected to additional federal reporting, which I sort of highlighted at the top. Um, we will work with the selected agency and, and detail what that federal reporting looks like. Uh, just know that it, it will have additional reporting requirements. Uh, and so now we're talking about uh, you get to the point where you actually submit your application through our e-procurement system. Uh, we have a scoring criteria uh, and the maximum amount for each application will be 100 uh, points. And so what we have here is a breakdown of uh, each of the categories of, of how the, the points are assigned. Um, and once you actually log into the e-procurement system and begin the application process, you will find questions uh, under each of these categories. And so the one thing that I would advise you to do if you are really serious about submitting an application, please take the time to read each of the questions, understand what is being asked. If we are asking you guys to submit documentation, please, please, please submit that documentation. Cannot tell you how many applications we have looked at where we have asked for uh, a document to be attached and 
the individual does not, the organization does not submit that uh, attachment. So uh, start the process early, read the questions. If, if you have to read them multiple times, I would advise you to read them multiple times. Uh, if you uh, submit your application, I would advise you to probably have someone who is unfamiliar with the application, take a look at it and read through it just to, to make sure that you're being um, uh, concise uh, and, and that you're actually responding to the questions. Um, and just back to the scoring criteria, uh, we place uh, point values around each of those categories uh, with an organizational experience. So we're going to be looking at the, the overall organization and see what type of experience they have. Those questions within that category will we'll try to suss out uh, the experience of that organization. So again, this is an opportunity for you to answer about your organization. Please answer all those questions. The next category will be the organizational infrastructure capacity. Uh, we're looking at the organization and we're trying to figure out if this is an organization that is in a position to, do they have the controls in place? Do they have the infrastructure in place to handle a, a large grant, a, a large federal grant? Uh, so again, look at each of those questions and make sure that you're answering and providing any of the documentation that is requested. We'll also look at your program implementation strategy. We're going to look to you as a potential grant administrator to tell us how you would administer this program. So we'll ask you a series of questions, uh, and we would hope for you guys to provide us answers uh, to, to help us understand uh, how wh what your strategy would be around uh, administering this program. The other thing would be your uh, financial and budgetary capacity. Uh, and so we're, we're going to be looking at your budget. Again, please make sure that you're really detailed in responding to the budget because we want to see what your fiscal makeup is. What, How do you as an organization, what's your standing? How are you positioned to handle uh, this program? Uh, so again, these are important questions to answer. All of them are important questions to answer, but by all means, um, you know, make sure you take the time to, to respond uh, and submit your answers. And then we uh, assess a point value for the overall responsiveness of the application. This is back to what I was saying earlier, is that uh, if you guys are not responding, don't give us one and two word answers. We, we really want to insight uh, into to your organization. So please uh, be detailed when you respond. One or two word answers is probably going to get the, the uh, application lower scores. Um, we, we want to understand that you understand uh, what this program is about. So th those are the, the scoring criteria. And again, once you start the, the application process within uh, e-procurement, each of those categories will have the question, the relevant questions that you will need to answer. Uh, the contract details. Uh, the initial period will be 12 months from approximately November through December of 25. Um, and we will have at least one, well, with the possibility of one six month extension. Again, it all depends on the pace uh, of the, the program. Uh, there may not be an extension, but we, we do reserve the right to do an extension. Uh, how to apply. You have to complete that application through the e-procurement system. This is a system that is owned by an entirely different department outside of business affairs and consumer protection. I'm saying that to say that you will need to create your own login. You will need to go through whatever that e-procurement process is in order for you to first register as a potential um, applicant. And then uh, once that registration is successful, then you will be able to submit your specific application for this opportunity. Uh, this is important here. So this RFP, will close on September 6th. So my advice to anybody who's seriously interested in applying as a grants administrator is if you have not registered with the e-procurement website, please, please take care of it as soon as possible. Do not wait until a couple of days before this opportunity closes because there could be a volume issue. Uh, business Affairs and Consumer Protection is not responsible for uh, people who don't get the registration uh, Proper, proper registration to e-procurement system. So uh, unfortunately, you might reach out to me panicked saying, hey, I didn't get, I didn't hear back from uh, iSupplier. I have no control over that. So I, I'm advising you, you guys to start the process as early as possible. 
uh, register, get familiar with the system, even if you are not in a position to submit uh, the application just yet for this opportunity, familiarize yourself with uh, iSupplier. They do maintain uh, a separate help desk that uh, answers any of the questions related to login, login problems, so on and so forth. They cannot assist you with the specifics of BACP's uh, opportun RFP opportunity. So uh, once you start and submit that application, we will provide you guys our contact information so you can reach out to us to ask uh, questions about um, the, the application. Um, and again, this last bullet point here, uh, you can only submit one application uh, per, per iSupplier user ID. So if you guys are, again, this goes back to if you plan, if your strategy is to partner with other organizations, determine who's going to be that lead organization. That lead organization would use their credentials with an iSupplier, and they would be the ones that would submit that application. Um, the timeline, uh, the RFP due date is September the 6th. Uh, 2024 before 12 p.m. noon central time. So at exactly 12 p.m., it is too late. The system will automatically lock and will not allow you to submit the application. So make sure that uh, you are well, well prepared well before September the 6th to submit your application. Uh, again, this is another situation where I can cannot tell you how many times I've received phone calls from people at 12.01, saying, hey, I was just about to submit and uh, now I am unable to submit. Unfortunately, we, we wanna make this a, a fair process. So everybody is being held to that same deadline. So we will not be allowed to allow any application to be submitted after that deadline has expired. So again, this is my, my uh, sound advice to you is to become extremely familiar with uh, iSupplier, the e-procurement system well before you guys are ready to submit that application. So after September 6th uh, closes, what uh, the department will do, the department being us, BACP, we will take a look at all of the applications that we receive, and then we will begin the evaluation process for all of those applications. And so we're anticipating that we will have a decision in the October, November timeframe. So that's when we'll let the organization know that um, the uh, opportunity will be awarded to, to that particular uh, organization. Um, and so, um, again, I just sort of indicated, they will, we will look at each of those applications. They will all undergo a technical review. Uh, and if there is any irregularities with those uh, applications, uh, it, it's at our discretion to uh, determine if, you know, if it's a minor enough irregularity, we, we can continue scoring it. But if, and when I say minor, Maybe you misspelled something. Uh, uh, we're okay with that, but major would be the application is just lacking all of uh, the details that we're asking for. Uh, so again, be really, really aware uh, what we're asking for when you submit that application. Um, the other thing is this per this presentation will also be uploaded. Well, I'm sorry, this presentation will be provided to you and we will upload this to the, the department's BACP's uh, YouTube channel. And we will also provide you guys a list of the questions and answers that uh, comes from this uh, presentation. So as I was mentioning earlier, uh, we're, we're toward the end of my piece of this presentation. Uh, if for whatever reason uh, you come up with some additional uh, questions, um, here's the email address that you can uh, send those questions to. Once we respond out to you after this, we will also provide you that contact information. Uh, all right, so uh, I'll turn it over to questions. There are a few questions in the chat. So okay. the first one is, can you explain the rationale for grouping small business and nonprofit grants under a single administrator rather than separating these into two programs? Um, okay, so I guess I'll give a little bit, of, and that's a good question, uh, a little bit of context here. Um, this federal funding is part of the American Recovery Plan. And so uh, in the interest of efficiency and time, 
uh, we sort of played uh, with that idea of giving two separate entities uh, funding, one for nonprofit and one for um, small businesses. And it just, it, from a time perspective, it just would not have worked out. It would have been too complicated for the department to manage. It would have been too complicated for us to work with. We're one department, and so we would have to try to work with all these separate entities uh, one, the grants administrator for small businesses, and, and then the separate grants administrator for the nonprofits. It, it, it just would have become extremely complicated to manage uh, separate entities. And so after some consideration, we designed this program to be one administrator. And we feel that there is one really good administrator, grants administrator out there who would be capable of managing uh, these two separate types of, of uh, entities. Thank you. The next one is more of a program related question. Do we have defined requirements for small businesses to be eligible? Uh, no, not at this point. Uh, again, broad strokes here. Uh, these would be businesses that have been uh, impacted by the uh, pandemic. Uh, it is a program uh, question as, as uh, Hayal mentioned. Um, those eligibility requirements, once we've uh, selected a grants administrator, we will work with that grants administrator to determine what that eligibility is. And once that application process is open, we will share alongside that application what that eligibility is. So uh, sit tight for now. We're not at the point yet where we can uh, discuss specifics of what the eligibility is, but we will definitely let you guys know uh, as soon as, as that information is designed and, and as soon as it becomes available. When is the city hoping to start receive applications and distribute funds? So we're looking to, uh, like I said, the program, uh, we're hoping that we will be working with the grants administrator in the November, uh, October, November timeframe. And again, don't, don't hold me to this. Probably near the end of the year is when we would probably open up the application process. And then uh, the funding would have to be after uh, tax season. So we want to get all of the organizations through the, the tax year. Uh, and so February was probably when we would, the earliest would, is when we would disperse, began dispersing the grant funds themselves. February of 2025. So the application process, the eligibility application will probably open closer toward the end of this year. Um, awardees would potential awardees would be notified early next year, and then funding would uh, follow that uh, somewhere around the February timeframe of 2025. Thank you. Will there be a webinar for applicants? Yes. So once we select an organization, we are hoping that we will work with uh, that organization to put together uh, a webinar that will answer all of the questions that those potential. Uh, grantees would have and, and and just to sort of give them uh what their next steps are in terms of being able to apply for that that funding great uh the next question does the administrator have to develop the website and or include the costs of developing the website with third parties in their response so our, our expectation is that the administrator would uh uh well i'll put it to you this way Broadly speaking, our expectation is the selected administrator would have a website available for applicants to uh, source. Uh, now, if that uh, administrator designed the website themselves or they outsource it to someone else, that's going to be their call. Uh, but it, it is a cost that they would be uh, allowed to be reimbursed from this grant. Thank you. The next one is an FYI. Somebody said, I believe the federal de minimis goes up to 15% on October 1st, 2024. Thank uh, you for that. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and we will check that as well. well. We'll research that and provide an answer in our uh, question and answer document that we send out. Next question, will you release bidders after submission so firms can potentially partner up? For example, if a MWBE Chicago firm can help the process, governance, and website, how do they partner up with an NFP agency with disbursement experience? Um, 
yeah, I I do not know. I, I can't answer that question right now. Um, I'll we'll have to look into that and, and get back to you. The next one: Why are five hundred one c four organizations excluded? Uh, how old would you know why they're excluded? My understanding is that 501c3s uh, and I think 19s that were on there have more experience with these type of programs. Um, so they will not be eligible to apply to be an administrator, but may be eligible to receive a grant once the program is designed. But again, we're not sure of the specifics yet. Um, so please be on the lookout for that once the program is live. Thank you. Uh, the next question is program related. Does your business have to be open and running during the pandemic? Again, we, we will provide you the specifics around program design uh, once we, we get to that, that point. I, I don't want to go too much into eligibility because this program, this, this particular RFP is for us to locate uh, and highly qualified grants administrator. So I don't want to go into too much specifics around the actual businesses or organizations that would uh, be applying for the funding. We will reserve those uh, eligibility conversations for when we actually open the application up uh, for, poten for potential uh, grantees, sub-grantees. Okay, the next one. Will the grants administrator be responsible for reviewing and approving the RFP grantees in tandem with the city of Chicago? Does a grant administrator need to be based in Chicago? Grant administration de administrator doesn't necessarily have to be based in Chicago. I guess I don't understand the, the question about approving the RFPs. Can you repeat the question, uh, Kyle? Sure. Will the grants administrator be responsible for reviewing and approving the RFP grantees in tandem with the city of Chicago? I think oh, they okay. might mean the okay. business, the yeah. businesses will apply. Yes, so the city will work with uh, the grant administrator to determine the eligibility criteria. And so there's going to be oversight from us, but we're hoping to put that uh, the grant administrator, once they understand what the requirements are, um, in a position that they can approve those applications. That's not to say they will do it solely. Uh, it's going to be a, a, a collective effort. Uh, we'll determine collectively what that uh, eligibility process looks like. And then more than likely, we will have um, insights and opinions on the applications that um, are potentially approved. So it, it's going to be a, a relationship between the city and um, the grants administrator, but it, it will all be based off of uh, all of the same eligibility criteria for, for each of the applications. I hope that answers the question. In other words, it's going to be a collective effort between the city and the grants administrator. Thank you. The next question is a similar question. Would the grant administrator be expected to determine whether applicants have met the three stated eligibility requirements, revenue loss, higher cost, increased demand for services? So again, these are program specific. Uh, yes, the, the program, uh, the grants administrator will uh, work with the city to, to determine what that eligibility criteria is. And then they will be, there's an expectation that the grants administrator will be handling all of those applications and scoring them based off of their criteria. Again, it's a collective effort between the city and the administrator. We will be in constant contact with that grants administrator as these decisions are being made. Can the online application be downloaded into Word format for us to draft our proposal and review before finalizing? Um, that's an e-procurement question. I do not know. I, I don't know. Uh, you can reach out to I, the iSupplier help desk and we can provide you, you guys that information in the uh, response in the Q&A document. There's a help desk um, that you can ask. I, I believe you can. I believe that each of the applicants, there is a, a link that has what is called the supplier's view that uh, would allow you to download that particular application and print it out if you, you need to, to look at it in a hard copy. If it's, if it's I don't know if it's in a Word, Word, Microsoft Word format or not. 
It might be some native application to iSupplier, but I do believe that's a functionality, but it is a very specific question that the uh, iSupplier help desk uh, would be able to answer for you. Great, next question. The RFP states the contract period is October 1st, 2024 to March 31st, 2026 with an optional six month extension. Is the date really November 2024 to December 2025? This would make a large difference in building the budget. Um, so the contract itself, again, it is sort of a moving target. I shouldn't say moving target. It, it is is negotiable. We want to make sure that we selected a particular uh, grants administrator before the end of this year. So the actual contract itself would be from, it could be November, uh, it could also be uh, October. I, I wanna go back and see what we said. The initial contract will be 12 months. So uh, from November through December 25, November through December 21 extension, six months. You know what, uh, I will clarify that. L let me get you an answer when we respond to the Q&A. Great, the next question. Will BACP make today's bidders conference attendee list available via email or website? We can share the list of organizations that attended, but that's, that's as much information that we would be able to provide. The list of organizations that attended this conference, yes, we cannot provide you the actual specific names of, of those individuals for obviously for privacy concerns. The next couple questions are similar. Um, they're asking about the contract date, so we will get that clarified and add it to the FAQ. Okay. Um, will the grant administrator candidates be made public? The candidates? Uh, no, I, I think what we'll once we award, uh, we make the decision on who the administrator is, that will be made public. We, we won't make the actual applications uh, public. Thank you. Um, the next question is, so a delegate agency will be applying to be the administrator? Yes. Okay, the next one. Can you elaborate a little more on the administrator's infrastructure? What would be a desirable infrastructure for this project? Well, a desirable infrastructure would be an organization that has probably managed uh, a large uh, grant fund, uh, one that probably has uh, financial relationships that would allow them, recognizing that large programs probably require large overhead and so that they have funds availability uh, through banking relationships or some other financial capacity to manage a reimbursable grant. Uh, and from an infrastructure perspective, one that uh, recognizes that this is a, a federal program that comes with all sorts of requirements uh, heavily on the reporting side. So we're looking for someone who uh, would be able to uh, build that website that we were saying for uh, build or contract it out or design and understand what the requirements are around managing an applicant website. Uh, someone who understands and recognizes uh, that we are required to collect and report on all sorts of data uh, about the efficacy of, of these programs. Uh, so someone who would be in a position to, to capture that data, uh, speak on that data. Someone who has the consultative uh, experience uh, so when the city says to that organization, we want you to help us build this program, that that organization has enough experience and insight to come back to the city with really well thought out uh, ideas as to how a program such as this would, uh, would be run. The city, of course, has its own ideas, but we're also heavily relying on an organization who, that has the experience with, with similar programs. And so we will be looking at that organization uh, to be able to, you know, pretty much be in a position to stand up and, and run from day one. Uh, so if an organization is relatively new or they don't have a lot of um, the either software uh, uh, to, to manage these programs, 
is probably not going to be a good fit, but we're looking for people who probably have run similar programs and have a lot of those relationships in order to uh, stand this program up uh, either from a programmatic perspective, um, well, from both a programmatic perspective as well as from being able to, to handle it from a fiscal perspective because this is a reimbursable grant. Uh, there's an expectation that the organization will have to incur costs and may have to wait a protracted period of time before uh, the funding is, uh, ultimately the city reimburses them. So, um, you know, uh, ideally that the, the organization has a fiscal infrastructure as well as uh, programmatic in infrastructure in place uh, and the capacity, meaning that uh, they're not stretching themselves stand running too many large programs at one time. So uh, it, it's a, a balancing act. We will know it when we see it. I can't give you any more specifics than, than that. Thank you. The next question, do you know, it's another program related question, do you know when the process will open to the potential grantees after the grant administration administrator has been hired? Uh, stay tuned. Like I said, late, probably later this year, um, possibly early next year. But stay Thank tuned. You. We we will provide you guys. Uh, we we will definitely be making this uh, publicly known. Thank you. Can you repeat the portion about a for profit business applying? Um, uh, what portion of that? Uh, so a for profit business can apply. Uh, however, the federal government um has very specific requirements uh, around uh, for-profit businesses uh, profiting from federal funding. Uh, if it's a government agency, the exception obviously would be a government agency. And I don't want to get into too much specifics because this is a really um, esoteric regulation and it is a federal regulation. Essentially what we're saying that uh, a for-profit business can apply for this grant opportunity, but their cost associated with this program has to be costed solely for this program. In other words, if just throwing it out there, uh, you you win the twenty million dollar award, uh, and then you come back and say your cost uh, for managing the program is, you know, we'll give you a, a, the ten percent, which would be two point what two point one five million. Um, if your cost is a million dollars, you can't profit uh, $1.5 million. You can't walk away enriched from a federal program. Uh, your The only cost that you were able to submit and be reimbursed for would be the sole cost of the program. There is no profit for that for-profit entity. I would encourage you guys to look up this, this particular regulation here, this 2 CFR 200 uniform guidance that'll give you more. It's a lot of reading, but uh, we, we had to put this here to let those for-profit businesses know uh, that the, the federal government has this stipulation. Thank you. There are many program-related questions in the chat that we're gonna skip over because the program has not been designed yet. Um, the next question, our management consulting company is very familiar with ARPA funding and would be interested in the grants administration. Who should we reach out to? Uh, as I've indicated with this uh, presentation, all of the applications must be submitted through e-procurement, uh, the iSupplier system. Um, we can provide you guys, when we uh, send out the Q&A, we can provide you guys a link to it, uh, to the e-procurement system. Or you can go to the City of Chicago's website uh, or you can just Google City of Chicago procurement, and then uh, you will more than likely find the link to the e-procurement system, in which case you'd have to register. Once the registration has been completed, then you can begin uh, the application process for, for this grant. Uh, all of the applications must be submitted through e-procurement. There is no possibility of you submitting a paper document to us. You cannot email it to me or anyone on my team. Uh, it has to go through the e-procurement e system, and we will provide that link uh, in the uh, Q&A response back to all of the attendees of, uh, of this pre-submittal conference. 
Thank you. And then as a reminder, the link is also on the RFP. Yes, it is on uh, the uh, RFP, which is inside of uh, e-procurement. E so the next we question. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. How will the organizations be contacted to apply for the grant once the grant administrator has been selected? So the grant administrator will work with the city and the city will set up an online application process and uh, those eligible, those people who wish to apply will follow the process for submitting their application. Again, once we, we stand up the program, we will provide ample notice along with instructions as well as a webinar to familiarize potential applicants. Is this recording going to be made public? Yes, we will post it to BACP's YouTube channel. And then a question about the grant application portal. Is there a preferred application portal for BACP? Uh, no. Okay, the next question. What about the new businesses that want to supply? Is it a different process? I'm not sure what that question is referring to. If you can please provide more context. Um, next question. We've already answered that. Would the cost to design an applicant website exceed the 10% overhead grant admin routine cost? Would this be a capital expenditure? We're gonna look into that. Um, yeah. If you wanna provide more information or more context to the question, that would be great. Uh, what benefits does the grant administrator receive? The grant administrator uh, would receive, they're, they're eligible for um, collecting their costs of 10% of potentially of, of the, the grant. I mean, it's gonna be up to each of the uh, potential grant administrators to determine if this is an opportunity that fits their business model. Uh, I certainly can can tell you what that that benefit is, other than financial, which is they are allowed to to bill for uh, a certain percentage of uh, the overall grant award, which would be up to ten percent. Financial certainly is is the biggest incentive to, to most people, but it's going to be up to each and each organization to, to determine if this is beneficial for them to apply for this opportunity. Thank you. Another question, did you just say 501c3 cannot be the administrator? No, we said 501c3 can be the administrator, 501c4s are not able to be the administrator. Uh, would the city have interest in the incorporation of a research component into the project to measure the longitudinal impact of the grant program over a period of years? We're always looking at data points. Uh, I would say to the person who's asking that question, it does not hurt to include your suggestions in, in your application. Uh, just recognize that the overarching requirement of this uh, particular program is to disperse grant funding to impacted nonprofits and small businesses. Uh, that, that's the biggest thing that we're, we're trying to accomplish here. Certainly we're looking to see the the long-term impacts. Uh, and certainly if you have some suggestions and you, you intend on submitting an application, by all means, uh, submit that information. Will advanced payments be made available to grant administrator for routine costs? i.e. No. grant advance? Uh, the, the advance payment would be for strictly for uh, disbursement to the sub-recipients. Routine costs would be through our normal reimbursement process. So in other words, the organization will pay up front and then uh, submit uh, eligible expenses uh, through the vouchering system. Thank you. We are almost at time, so we've only got a couple of questions left. The rest we will be sure to answer in the FAQ. Again, can you share the organization's bidding and or interested in bidding, maybe from this call so organizations can team up? 
Uh, we will share the list of organizations that have attended uh, this uh, meeting. Uh, I, I obviously can't, I, I don't know who's going to uh, submit an application. Uh, and once they do that, that's uh, unfortunately, that, that's private information. And I would not be able to, to share that with, with anyone. The only information outside of that would be us sharing who we've uh, granted the uh, award to. And, and we usually use our standard process through a press release um, to release that information. But, but once the application process starts, I unfortunately cannot share that information. So what I can share is a list of organizations that attended this pre-submittal. Uh, and then after a grantor is selected, then uh, we will share that information. Thank you. So it looks like we are at time. We will make sure to compile all of your questions and the responses into an FAQ document that we will then email to everybody who joined the call today. All right. Uh, really, really appreciate all the interest in this program. We are really excited about it. Uh, all I can say to you guys is if you don't have familiarity with iSupplier, please, please, please begin that process uh, sooner than later. And uh, good luck to, to you all. Thanks for attending.